have to thank my company for sending me here. So I'm from New York, uh, a bit far away from home. Uh, I work for a company called Magnetic. Uh, like everyone else, we're hiring. Uh, you can come talk to me afterwards. We, uh, we've been running PyPy in production for like two years now, so that's something interesting. You can come talk to me about after, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. I'm sure everyone in the room, uh, raise your hand if you've never heard of JSON ever, which would be totally fine. Somewhat expectedly, I think everyone in the room probably has heard of JSON. If you haven't, JSON is a kind of structured data representation format. Um, we can use it to kind of represent data, and then since it's so kind of convenient and human readable, uh, people often use it to serialize data too, and um, do all sorts of things, send it over the network, um, whatever they can think. Uh, and so here's maybe a representation of um, some sort of document, uh, a JSON object, uh, maybe representing uh, some, some piece of data that we'd like to track. And so there's this thing called JSON schema, uh, which is first and foremost a specification. So it's, uh, it's a specification for actually defining schemas for data, because anytime you have some data, someone's going to come along eventually and want to define a schema for that data so that people um, can actually take the data that they have and describe to other people what the schema for that data is. Uh, the JSON schema specification is something you can use across languages. Um, there's this library here, which I wrote uh, quite a while back now, um, which is an implementation of the specification for Python. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, what the specification allows you to do uh, and how the library allows you to actually run some JSON schemas. So a little bit of terminology. But on the left here, we have uh, our instance, which is what we call the piece of data that we're trying to validate. On the right is our schema. Uh, and so this is kind of the world's simplest uh, schema other than the kind of trivial one. Um, so this one just says, basically, I'm going to want to validate uh, against anything of type integer. Uh, I'll try to separate a little bit between uh, JSON types and Python types. So stuff that goes in the type keyword are going to be JSON types, of which there are seven. Um, so this is validating an integer. And so kind of the most straightforward way to uh, just do some validation with that schema is you just import this function uh, called validate. Uh, you pass in your instance. You pass in your schema. You hit enter. Nothing happens um, because the specification or the, the, uh, the library does nothing when the instance is valid. Um, and so since 42 is an integer, uh, every, everything's happy. And uh, if this was in the middle of some code that you had that was validating, let's say, you know, incoming user data uh, in a web API or for some request, um, you just kind of continue on knowing that now um, you've checked that the data that you have is valid. So here's an instance that's not going to be valid because that string is clearly not an integer. Um, you pass it into the same thing. Uh, you get this longer looking trace back. So if we read through this quickly, uh, it possibly looks a bit scarier than it is. So we passed in our instance, and we get validation error. 42 is not of type integer. Um, so at the top there is kind of the, the most human readable attempt at describing what, rent, what went wrong. So more kind of information about uh, what was going on while we were doing the validation. So um, it's telling you it was trying to validate the type validator uh, in that schema right there, which was the one we provided, um, and on the instance that we provided. Uh, of course, in such a simplistic case, it's not terribly useful that it's repeating that information. But if you um, pay a bit of attention as we go on, uh, when, when things start to get a little bit more complicated on the bottom, um, you'll get a little bit uh, more interesting. Uh, so we saw already types. There are seven primitive types, uh, you know, whatever primitive types you can think of, strings, arrays, objects, uh, integers, numbers, um, whatever else I'm forgetting. Uh, ranges, sizes, and lengths. So if you have an object, you can define in a schema how long it should be or uh, what size it should be. So strings, how long are they? Arrays, how long are they? Objects, how many properties do they have? Um, container contents, so if you have uh, an array or an object, uh, which is a container, you can define what the schemas of its items or elements should be, or properties. Uh, form, for a given uh, type, you can define, uh, let's say for an integer, you can define it has to be a multiple of 17, because it's a very important property of your schema. Uh, and then some higher order operators, uh, which we'll see uh, a little bit later. Um, so if we go back to our... Um, original object here, uh, if we wanted to define a schema for this object, not the hardest thing in the world. Uh, There's going to be slightly more lines on the next slide, but nothing particularly uh, frightening, I hope. So if we just read this slowly, it says type object properties, which means now I'm going to tell you what the schema for each of the properties in this object should be if that property is there. So if it's not there, no problem. Um, there are other validators that make things required. but um, this validator just says, if the name property is there, it needs to be a string. 
If the location property is there, it, need to, it needs to be an array. Description is nothing, it's just metadata, it's information for someone reading the schema. So we're kind of letting someone know here, since JSON doesn't have comments, that we're trying to represent a latitude and longitude. Um, and then we're saying the array should have two items, and there are their corresponding schemas. So the first um, element of the array should be a number between negative 90 and 90, uh, and the second one should be a number between negative 180 and 180. If we validate that against that schema that we had, no problem. Uh, just a note, uh, just to be a little bit pedantic before we go too far forward, uh, so JSON schema uh, is completely wrong because uh, JSON schema doesn't actually validate JSON at all. It validates Python objects. Uh, it happens to validate the typical kinds of Python objects that you'll get from deserializing JSON, but JSON is text. It doesn't actually validate JSON, it validates Python, which means theoretically you can just use it on um, whatever Python you'd like, uh, although I, I would, I would discourage you from actually using it to do type checking just in the same way you wouldn't want to do type checking elsewhere. Uh, I have this instance on the left here, which is an array with the number one inside. Uh, and there's a schema on the right here, uh, which that instance on the left is particularly egregiously wrong against. Um, so we're trying to validate arrays of type Boolean with at least two elements in there um, for whatever reason. So min items is the validator for um, you must have at least two items inside the array. Um, and the items validator says what schema each of those items must satisfy. So obviously this instance on the left is completely wrong. It has neither booleans inside nor is it at least two. But if you pass it in to the function that we saw before, you'll, you'll still get a validation error. Um, but if we want to do kind of uh, things that are a little bit more exciting, um, we have to start making use of um, these validator uh, objects uh, of which, um, so the current draft of JSON schema, which is in uh, draft mode, uh, is called draft4. Um, so there's a draft4 validator which implements the version of the specification which we've been using. And that validate function that we've been using so far basically just creates one of these for us um, on our behalf, uses it and throws it away. But if we want to kind of keep, uh, keep validating a couple of different times, uh, we can create one of these on our own and just kind of reuse it. So you pass in the schema, and now you have an object that basically can validate instances against that schema over and over again. Um, so if we pass that object uh, has, a, has a validate method, similar to the global one that you'll find uh, at the root of the package. Um, so there's a validate method, you can call it, if you pass it, valid arrays of booleans. Again, same API, nothing happens. But if we pass it now our instance, uh, we get a very similar looking trace back to what we had before. Uh, you'll notice now that some of those things on the bottom are perhaps a little bit more useful. Um, so now uh, it says failed validating type in schema index items, because uh, it was validating a sub-piece of the schema that we passed in, uh, and that sub-piece is type boolean, uh, and it was validating instance index zero, the first element of the index, uh, of the array, sorry, uh, which is a one, slightly hard to see, I think, with the light on, but one's not a boolean, so when we passed it into validate, we got an error, um, but I'm not necessarily happy enough with that. I'd like to know uh, if, if kind of I'm using JSON schema to validate a form on a web page. Uh, if, I, if there's 200 problems with the input that the user gave me on a web page, it would be nice if I didn't have to do them one by one. So I just want to know all the problems with the instance. Um, so there's this uh, method on a validator called iter errors. Uh, it basically just gives you an iterable of all of the errors uh, in your particular instance. So if we pass our instance in, and um, we pull off the message attribute of each error in there, uh, there you'll see there are two of them. Oh. Um, you'll see there are two of them. So the first one says one is not a Boolean, which was the error that we saw before, but there's another one that says that the entire array is too short. Um, so there's two errors in here, uh, and we just got both of them. The errors that we were iterating over there actually have a whole bunch of um, information that we can actually pull off them. Uh, we'll see some of these a little bit later, uh, but roughly they fall into like human readable information about what happened, that's the message attribute, which we just saw. Some, some kind of side context about why that error was happening, which we'll see in a little bit, um, which is context and cause. And then a bunch of stuff about the environment, where's the instance, what's the, like, what's the instance, what's the schema, where in the instance were we, where in the schema are we, um, which validator were we validating, and what value did that validator have. Another interesting thing, which I won't spend too much time on today, is there's this object called error tree, which basically is a way of mirroring your instance and letting you kind of walk the tree in the same way as you would walk your instance. So here, if we pass in the same instance as before, we can look at tree uh, index zero, which is the zeroth element in my, in, in my instance, uh, which is that one. And then if we look at the errors at that node, you'll see errors relating to the zeroth index of my instance. 
Um, so if you, if, you have an, if you have an instance that's kind of like a tree or some sort of uh, recursive object or something like that, you can just kind of walk a corresponding error tree and look at errors at any given point in your instance. So let's talk about references. So JSON schema, again, it's kind of a generic tool. Uh, when you give programmers generic tools, sooner or later they uh, want a way to actually be able to name things. So here's a schema. Uh, maybe we want to keep track of a name, a nickname, and a username. All three of those things are strings. Uh, and all of them should be non-empty, because who has an empty name? Uh, so this is a perfectly reasonable schema. It would be nice if we were able to actually uh, give some names to things. So this thing on the right here, uh, first of all, dollar sign $ref, it's a little bit special. The thing on the right over here is called a JSON pointer ref, uh, reference. Um, and so basically, this allows us to define uh, our schema for these particular properties as being a reference to someplace else. Um, so these are actually URIs. Um, but particularly, these JSON pointer references are pretty easy to resolve. So that uh, hash sign means basically the document that we're in. So hash slash definition slash name like means this document, then definitions within that document, and then name like within definitions. Um, so this schema actually defines the same thing, except that now each of those three schemas for those three names are defined by a reference, which means when we figure out hey, there's actually no reason why someone should have a name that's longer than four kilobytes either. Someone can just kind of add it to the definition at the bottom, and now it applies to all three. Same reason why we might like um, a little bit of abstract abstraction elsewhere. Someone asks us to define a schema for a non-empty sequence, where uh, sequence is defined by the same way we define sequence in Python, um, let's say an array or a string. Given the way that actually uh, schema validation is defined, Properties that don't apply to a particular object actually are a uh, particular instance are ignored. So min items only applies to an array. Min length only applies to a string. If you put both of them in the same place, as long as you say that the object can be one of those two types, the other one will be ignored when you have an instance that isn't of that type. Um, so this schema actually implements uh, non-empty sequence. The question was, can you use a ref to something that isn't in the document? Yes, it's arbitrary URIs. Uh, I didn't show it here, but actually the library lets you plug in whatever um, kind of resolution engine that you'd like. By default, if requests is installed, it will use that. So if you want to retrieve references over like HTTP or any scheme that requests understands, you just put them in your schema and then um, it will automatically resolve them by downloading the reference document. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So now the question is, is there a, play, is there a kind of a common repository of, there, there sort of is some. So in, I think one of the repositories for the specification has kind of 10 or 20 fairly common examples, things like you know an address book. Here are the four schemas that you want for an address book. There isn't a great one that I know of, although maybe it exists by now. JSON schema is fairly large, and unfortunately, I don't keep up with the entire ecosystem as much as I probably should, um, especially because I'm part of, partially part of the like, spec group. Uh, but I, I, don't know of, uh, I don't know of a good uh, centralized repository of schemas, although maybe it exists already. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so how about another example? Now that we were so good with validating non-empty sequences, someone comes to us and says, we want to validate against uh, either a moniker or a name or an alias. We, we would either like, we would like any of these three instances to be valid, uh, either the letter S or an array that just says name Clark Kent or an array that says alias Superman. Any of these instances are um, reasonable for whatever place we're actually going to shove this data. So we want to validate against any of these three things. Those higher order validators that we discussed briefly before come in. Uh, now I'm using refs just to save some space on the slide. Uh, but the new thing here is this validator called one of, uh, which does exactly what it says. So one of is a validator that basically takes an array of schemas, and the instance is valid if it validates against one of those schemas. Uh, and it's one and only one. So if we just literally translate what we just said, which is one of either a moniker, a name, or an alias, this schema, uh, as soon as we plug in the definitions, actually does that. Uh, again, this is slightly longer, but not that complicated. So we just define moniker to be a string matching the regex pattern, capital letter, one or more. Uh, and then name is an object, uh, required. Uh, and then properties name string, alias, same thing, except now alias. And now if we validate, let's say, the empty string against uh, that schema that we just defined, it'll say, failed validating one of in the schema, that one on instance empty string, because the empty string is not valid under any of those given schemas. We can look at iter iter errors, which should give us all of the errors, and it does. There's one error there. The one error is basically, you asked me for a one of, the instance wasn't valid under any of those uh, schemas. Uh, but now we can actually look at the context attribute, which uh, I mentioned very briefly before, 
Uh, and this will tell us basically for each branch in the one of, why, didn't, why weren't we able to actually satisfy that branch of the one of? So there were three schemas in my array, and there's three errors in the context, one corresponding to each of those schemas, telling me for each schema in that array, why wasn't the instance valid under that one part of the one of? So for the first one, it says, well, it's because empty string doesn't match A to Z plus. Uh, and then for the second two, name and, uh, and alias, it says because it's not an object. Um, so you'll get one error in there for each um, branch of your higher order validator. Uh, but I don't like that either. I mean, it would be nice uh, maybe if I were just able to get, uh, like, just tell me th the best possible uh, explanation for why my instance isn't valid, right? What's, what's the most likely reason? Um, and so for that, there's this heuristic function called uh, best match. You can pass in um, an iterable of errors, which was exactly what iter errors was giving us. So we just pass that in, uh, and what we get is basically the error that uh, best match considers to be the best possible reason why your instance isn't valid, um, for which here it's picking the, the, the error that was in the branch for it is a string, but it's supposed to be um, one or more capital letters, and since it's the empty string, um, that's why that, that didn't validate, so it's considering that error to be a better match than the other two, which, um, which we're asking for an object. The question is, what's the heurist heuristics based on? It's very simple. Um, basically, the, uh, the heuristics, which happen to work at least well enough for, for general kind of um, use cases, at least in my uh, experience and from what I've heard, the heuristics is basically there are a set of highly weighted validators, like the type validator, which are generally very informative. Um, so if you're, if you're com of completely the wrong type, you kind of move those errors to the end because you're probably not uh, actually in that realm. Uh, and then kind of you sort by the set of uh, weighted validators. Uh, and then you pick the highest rated error after sorting by um, that kind of predefined list of validators and then recurse inside the context attribute uh, of that particular error if it happens to be a higher order um, error that you just do the same process again. Uh, all of that's actually controllable, so there's a function again, which I'm not defined, which I'm not um, showing here, called relevance, which is actually um, the, the actual sort function. Um, so you can kind of redefine the sort function if you'd like. You can pass it to sorted and sort the errors yourself and manually um, manually change that around. Um, so you get a little control of that. Uh, format is a way of saying for a particular instance, what, is, what should it look like? So here's a string, but it should be a date. Uh, for that, you use an object called a format checker, because um, by default, the format validator is actually just for metadata, just like description. Um, but you can use it to actually do some validation. You plug in this object, you pass in a thing that's not a date, you'll get 2014-01 is not a date. Uh, and you can actually define your own if for whatever reason you feel like defining a schema uh, that needs to know whether a particular um, instance is prime or not. You can actually just kind of uh, create one of these objects uh, decorate a function that's going to actually do the validation, uh, and then now you can write schemas that say type string format prime or type integer format prime. As you may have noticed also, schemas are JSON, and given that they're JSON, you can use other schemas for their schemas. Um, so that's what meta schemas are. Basically, there is a meta schema that defines what a valid schema looks like, and you can validate against it. So you can pass in uh, to this class method now called check schema. You pass in a schema. It will tell you whether the schema you passed in is valid or not. Um, so here I passed in an object for the type validator, which isn't the, the right um, type of object for type. And it gives you the same sort of trace back, uh, which is, again, less scary than it looks. So it's telling you it was trying to validate any of in schema properties type, which means basically it's trying to validate whether your type validator is a valid type. Uh, and the meta schema says that uh, type either needs to be a ref to one of the simple types, which was one of those seven types I mentioned, or an array of one of those simple types of size at least one with unique items. And since you're not one of those, your instance isn't valid. And again, nothing special here. So you can actually pass the meta schema into a validator, create a validator that actually validates with the meta schema, and now you can get all the errors with a schema um, in the same way you would before. Uh, here are some resources. Top one is for installing the library. Second one is a uh, decent uh, beginner to intermediate tutorial uh, on the actual uh, specification itself, cross language -y. Uh Third one's documentation for the library. Check it out. Um, the fourth one is the actual um, website for the uh, specification itself. Uh, it's a little bit uh, kind of technical reading wise. Um, so I'd recommend the second one if you're actually just looking to learn it. Uh, fifth one is kind of relevant to people writing validators. If you want to write one in some other language, first of all, it probably exists already. 
Um, but if you don't, uh, there's a cross-language test suite that I wrote, um, which you can use to actually check to make sure your validator uh, is properly adhering to the suite. Uh, and the bottom link is actually a fiddle. Um, so like similar to JS fiddle, if you've seen those, uh, basically lets you put in an instance, a schema, and kind of play with it in real time. It will tell you whether the instance is valid or not. Can the, uh, the question was, can the references be back references? Uh, yes, so, so the, the hash sign is a, uh, is a reference to the top level schema. So you, you always basically get the top level schema and you can recurse back down into them, yeah. Are there implementations of validators in other languages? Yes, at least 30 languages. So do they all cooperate on the definitions of the, meaning do they all basically b behave the same? Uh, so I can tell you that at least the ones that actually, excuse me, at least the ones that actually run the uh, test suite all behave the same, at least because the test suite actually is fairly comprehensive and uh, the test suite is common, yeah. Uh, the test suite is a bunch of JSON documents that um, whichever languages implementations can actually just execute. Uh, and they say like, this is valid, this is invalid, this is it, you know. So any, anything that kind of runs that test suite is basically gonna perform the same across languages. They might not have the same API, obviously, um, but they'll, they'll be behaviorally correct. Are there code generation plugins? Yes, I have never used, well, um, I've indirectly used, so RAML is a API um, is somewhat similar to Swagger, I guess. Uh, yeah, check out RAML, it's, it's nice on its own. Um, and RAML uses JSON schema, and RAML generates clients and servers and all of those things. Um, so there's RAML and there's a bunch of other stuff too. Cool, thanks everybody.